Hello, Scotty here. Um, I've had a couple of different guys send me messages asking me about how I do my queen rearing and I, I thought I would try and explain it. Um, this is about my fourth or fifth attempt at this. Uh, the videos keep running too long and uh, my wife and I were watching it last night and decided to cut out a whole lot of the detail, nuances perhaps. I keep getting sidetracked here so I'm going to try and cut down and just go down the center give you the, the real nuts and bolts of how I do it. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing I'm not cutting out is the disclaimer. Uh, <laughs> this video is just about how I do it. I am in no way saying this is the best way or the only way or the way that you should do it. This video is for entertainment purposes only. It is not a how-to. All right. Ho hopefully that's enough of a disclaimer. Um, if you do decide to try and do this and, and you want a little more information, send me a message. I'll, I'll see if I can help you. But it certainly isn't the only way. I've read a ton of books. Uh, watched a lot of videos. I've taken little pieces from everybody and I've kind of come up with the way I do this and I'm not afraid to change it. Um, if I read something new and I think it's going to be easier on my bees and easier for me, I tend to adapt it or adopt it, whatever. Um, so this is kind of an ever-changing thing, but uh, I've done this for three or four years now. It's working pretty good for me um, in my situation. So I will try and explain what I do. Um, first thing is drones. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about it because it, that, that, that can certainly be a whole video. But drones are extremely important and you want to have your drones in a different yard than the yard where you have your virgin queens. Um, there's lots of books on that. Uh, I definitely try to select queen, uh, the drone mothers and uh, I definitely try and control some of the drones from queens I don't want drones. Anyway, like I said, that, that could be a whole video right there. So I have a separate yard for drones. Uh, you definitely need to get your drone colony started two or three weeks ahead of your queen yard because drones take longer to develop. So okay, we have drones. Um, queen mothers, I do keep records on a lot of stuff. Um, but you pick the traits that you like and that you want. Uh, number one trait for me is the girl has to survive the winter. <laughs> if the hive doesn't survive the winter, we're not grafting from that, that's for darn sure. But I, I do look at a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I don't like wearing a suit, so pretty high on my list is uh, you know the temperament of the colony, and I certainly keep records of that. If, if I got a nasty colony, I'm definitely not uh, not going to graft from that. Um, I monitor mites with alcohol wash. I do treat for mites, but uh, I do watch the colonies and I try and select ones that the mite levels are low. Um, longevity, you know, I, I watch queens two years. Uh, last year I had one that was three years. Um, I try and graft from those ones because you know they've survived two or three winters, but sometimes it's a first year queen or a second year queen, I guess. Um, and I also have some issues here with chalk brood. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just my weather. Uh, I, I do watch that. I try and control that in both the drones and definitely in the, the queen weather. So you select for a queen. Uh, if you watch some of my other videos, I have push pins. I'll put a single green pin in if it's a laying queen, two green pins if it's a, a marked queen, which 99% of mine are. Uh, easier to keep track of things. You know if they've superseded that way or swarmed. Um, but if, I, if I've selected one for a queen rearing, I usually put a third pin in there just, just so I can, just so I know. I do have written records too, but the push pins are kind of nice. So that's, that's the queen. And, ah, okay, backtrack already. I actually do three sets. I've done that now the last three years. I'll do three cell builders, three queens I graph from. I do three cycles. Keeping my genetic diversity up perhaps a little bit, but also if I mess up one, and I'm not perfect, if, if you mess up a cell builder, you've still got the other two. And my summers are so short, if I mess one up, typically I don't have a chance to do to, to restart again. So, so I do three, but I'm just going to talk about one. Uh, just be aware that I do three. So I've got a, a colony I'm going to use for a cell builder that's just a good, strong, healthy colony in the bee yard. And then I've got a colony that I'm going to... Uh, be grafting from and then I've got several colonies I use as support colonies for making up nukes because you need frames of brood and, and whatnot. So um, when I'm ready to start there's no point in me talking about dates because wherever you live is going to be different but typically when the dandelions are, are blooming good not the first dandelion my I mean it's not uncommon for me to get snow here in May so I, this year I'm even going to push back a little wee bit more, but typically when the dandelions are, are in full bloom is when I would start this. So when I go to the bee yard and I start setting stuff up, the colony that I'm going to graft from, 
uh, make sure it's fed because I, I'm going to be taking larvae from there in a, a week or two. I want to make sure that they're well fed. So I'm going to make sure most of my colonies are going to be getting pollen supplement that time of year anyway, but I'll make for darn sure that one's got pollen supplement. And I'll put a feeder jar with just one to one, you know, the thin syrup. Again, we get a lot of crummy weather. I want to make sure those larvae are well fed. Right around the time that I do that, I go to the colony that I'm going to use for a cell builder. And I usually would put my, uh, my, my cover cloths on stuff and I've got my tables in the bee yard and I'll split these two boxes apart. I just find it easier that way to find the queen. She's not running down and back up and whatnot. So I'll go through that, that colony. I'll find the frame that the queen's on. Um, if it's in the top, wonderful. I take it away. If it's not, I rearrange this hive so that when I'm done, I've got a couple of nice frames of pollen and I've got an empty space. I take this frame. The queen is laying on this frame with all of the bees and I'll just set it aside. I'll talk about that in a second. And then uh, what I would do then is I would just grab a frame of foundation and I would put it in between there, put this all back together and then uh, close this up and I'm done with this one for now. I don't have to do anything else with this. The frame that the queen is on, you could certainly put her into a nuke box if you want, but um, this queen is a laying queen. She's going to run out of room real fast. So, and in the springtime, I'm crazy busy. I don't have a lot of time to be coming in and playing. So I would take this queen and I would just put her into a single deep. Um, and I don't have any issues with small hive beetle here. So I have no problem putting uh, bees into a bigger hive than what they can defend because there's no small hive beetle. Um, I wouldn't take anything else out of this colony to, to give to this queen. I'll actually go to the, one of the colonies that I'm going to graft from. Um, because I'm feeding them whatnot, I also worry a little bit about maybe they're going to get into swarm mode. I'll go into that colony and I'll look for one or two frames of capped brood with the bees. I smoke this colony. I smoke th those two frames. I'll put three frames into a deep box with some foundation and of course of inner cover vent roof. And I'm done with her then. I don't have to worry about her for weeks. Um, if you've watched some of my other videos, my wife and I run a commercial greenhouse. Starting in March till about the end of June, I work seven days a week. And in May and June, it's 15 hour days. So a little struggle sometimes. So I've got her a, a deep box and I, I'll, I'll feed her because they got so much foundation. Uh, but basically she's done with, I don't have to worry about her. Now the cell builder, if you read a lot of books, Okay, I don't do the, the swarm box or a starter or a finisher. Um, no real reason why. I've just kind of adopted this and it works pretty well for me. I'm only trying to do one batch of cells. A lot of these books, when you read them, they set up these different things and they're trying to do two or three or four cycles. Commercial beekeepers, I guess, they're doing it all summer long, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I want one batch. So this is one of the reasons I do this and it works well. Now, some of the books will tell you uh, and I've read this a few different places that in the springtime, there's lots of times there's two queens, uh, 20 to 30%, I think they say will have two queens. I've never found that. Um, I think what happens there is you catch them in the middle of a super procedure and the old queen is still there with the new queen. Well, you could look all day long because you don't know for sure there's a queen there. You're going to waste a pile of time. Some of the other books will tell you that you should remove all the eggs and young larvae so they can't do a cell. And of course, they're talking about grafting the next day or whatever. My eyesight's not the best. I don't feel like wasting time looking for a queen that might not be there. I just put that colony back together. I wait one week, depending on the weather, perhaps eight days. Now you come back. You open up this colony again, and uh, now you go through every single frame. If you find no queen cells whatsoever, you have a queen. Now you know there's a queen. You got to go in there and find her. If, you, if there is a, is a bunch of cells, well, there was no second queen. And now all I do, and the cells are way easier to find than eggs and young larvae, is break all the cells. Um, in the past, you, you, you could be tempted. And I mean, in the past, I did it a couple times. If you got a nice great big cell in there, you could certainly take one of those frames if it's got three or four cells, maybe knock them all off except for the nicest one. You know, again, if you liked the queen that came out of there, you could make a nuke out of that. And I, and I have, I don't do it anymore because you're weakening that colony. You want to keep that as strong as possible. So I just simply go through and knock off all the cells. Yeah, I knock off all the cells. We still got a frame of foundation there. Um, I take out that frame of foundation at this time and just get rid of, I'll shake the bees, sweep the bees, whatever. Then my grafting frame goes in. 
My grafting frame is just a regular frame. I've put a piece of three quarter inch pine on the side and I've made it up. These are those JZBZ uh, little cups. Um, at this point, I've knocked off all the cells. I just put this in and I put this back together um, and I'm gonna leave it till tomorrow. Um, so now when you took away the queen, you made them queenless. Now you knock off all the cells, you've made them hopelessly queenless. They have nothing left now that they can make queens. So they're, 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 they're gonna be pretty anxious to make some queens. You put in your grafting frame, they'll clean those cups and uh, get their scent and everything all over them. And uh, that's it for today. So I come back the next day, around 10.30, 11 o'clock in the morning, and I go to one of the support colonies. I, I, I don't go to the one I'm gonna graft from because I don't wanna disturb it, but I go to one of the colonies that I'm gonna uh, use as support colonies for making up my nukes when I have cells. I go in there and I find a frame that uh, is completely, as much as possible, you don't want a little patch, you want a, you want a nice full frame of larvae. Not so much eggs, larvae, because you want nurse bees. So this frame's covered in larvae, covered in nurse bees. You take it out, you look it over for the queen, and then I put it into my quiet box and cover it. Now I don't trust myself. If you take the queen from that colony and put it into this cell builder, game over. It, your, this whole thing's gonna fail on you. So. I'll tear that whole colony apart, go through it until I find the queen. Hopefully there isn't two queens, but go through there and find until, until you find the queen. As soon as I see the queen, put it back together. That's all I want to do. Um, I don't worry about the slot that this came out of uh, because this frame is not going to be gone that long. Uh, I just put that colony back together. So now i got this frame of nurse bees. I come over here. This would be, like I say, 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. I take this frame out. There's going to be bees all over it. I'll shake them off or sweep them off. Um, I am leaning more to her sweeping these days. Um, but anyway, get those bees off. I'll stick it in the quiet box. I'll take this frame that's covered in nurse bees. I'll puff a little bit of smoke in here, maybe a little bit of smoke in these guys, trying to cover up the queen scent, and then put this in here, and then again, close this colony back up, um, go for lunch, do whatever. A Couple hours later, I come back. Hopefully it's a nice sunny day, um, and then we're gonna get ready to graft. Um, I usually have some equipment stacked up in the bee yard uh, to a nice comfortable height. I throw a brick on there, just as a, an easel. I take a towel that's been uh, wet it down with warm water. This is to help keep the humidity up around uh, the, the larvae that you're going to graft. So I get that set up. I have a really, really good pair of glasses. These I got at a craft store. These are a five time magnifier. Um, I've seen lots of guys grafting with a magnifying glass. Well, it's hard if you don't have depth perception and you need to use both eyes to have depth perception. So I, I have one of these and I've got a little Chinese grafting tool. Um, it's all I've ever used. I, I like it fairly well. So I get everything all set up, then I'm gonna go to uh, the colony that I wanna graft from. I go in there, I'm trying to find a frame that's got eggs and the smallest larvae that you can, you know, with, with these glasses I can, well, I can see them, but just barely. Uh, with these glasses I see them really, really good. Find that, sweep the bees off. I am gonna sidetrack here a little bit. A Couple years ago I was doing it, I shook the bees off and then I set it up and I put my good glasses on and I noticed some of the larger larvae, I actually dislodged them out of the bee milk, which totally floored me. So I don't shake them anymore, I, I sweep them. I still shake bees occasionally when I'm in the bee yard and I'm in a little wee bit of a hurry, but uh, if I'm worried about the larvae at all, sweep them. So, okay, now you got your frame. Um, bees are all swept off, gone. I can set that up on there. Uh, my grafting frame is handy. I would just lay it someplace close by because there's nothing in it. Take that bar, set it in front, put my really good glasses on. This summer I'll try and do a real close-up of how to do this, not while I'm grafting because I don't want to waste the time. You, you want to get these larvae out of this frame and into these cells as quick as you can and get them back in. You don't want to keep the larvae away from bees any longer than is necessary. So a really good pair of glasses. I find the cell I want, and maybe the one below it is a larger cell, or maybe it's just an egg. Sometimes what I'll do is, is I'll actually break down the side wall of the cell just so I can get in here with this, with this little tool and scoop that larvae out and transfer it. I say, get them done, switch, do that one, get them all done. Then uh, take this frame, set it back in the quiet box and get it covered up just so that it's out of the sun and uh, they're not drying out. But these are the ones that are important. I'll take care of these ones in a minute. Then you go back to your cell builder again. 
Now, this frame, the reason you put this frame in there, it had nurse bees on it, but it's also getting all the nurse bees from this colony all up into this area, gets them all excited, primed, they're all making bee milk. Um, again, take, take your bee broom and sweep the bees off. I don't sweep, I try not to. Nurse bees in front of the colony, you let them march back in. Nurse bees have never been out of the colony, so they haven't done an orientation flight. I try and put them right back where I took them from. I'll take this frame, set it in my quiet box as well. I take my graft frame, drop it down in there, close that all back up nice, nice. There's pollen on both sides of it. I'll still give these guys um, some pollen supplement, put this on, and I'm gonna put a feeder jar on here right away. I, you want these bees to be well fed, so that they'll feed those larvae as best as possible. Then I would take these frames and go and put them back. Now the frame that was in here for a couple hours, you would think they're gonna start making queen cells and I have thought about this a lot actually. I've never had an issue there. That colony, that the support colony, it goes back to, it was queen right, I've never had an issue. And the other one just goes back into that colony and, and we're good. Uh, the books will all tell you that you wait until one day before the cells emerge. Okay, that's in the ideal world. I don't live in the ideal world. I, will, I live in the real world. Um, queen lays an egg. It's an egg for three days. Um, the first two and a half days, they're feeding it royal jelly. And then the, the next three and a half days, they start feeding it uh, bee bread, which is honey and pollen. So you want to graft from a one-day-old or a two-day-old larvae. I mean, that, that's the best. So you, you gotta get the smallest ones you possibly can. Well, it, the, that queen cell is gonna emerge on day 15, 16, maybe day 17, depending on the temperature. Um, the issue I have, and I mean, I'm, I'll be honest with you, 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 sometimes you graph from a larvae that's maybe just a little too old. Maybe, maybe a three-day-old larvae, maybe a four-day-old larvae, which you really shouldn't be doing. Try and get those young ones. If you accidentally Take a larvae that's a little bit too old, that's going to be the first one to emerge. And if it's in here, that virgin queen emerges within a couple hours, she's damaged or destroyed the other ones and you're going to lose the whole batch. On the other hand, if you take those cells too soon, you run the risk of damaging them because they're pretty fragile. I take them soon. I wait seven days, depending whether eight days. So it's somewhere around day 12 or day 13 from egg. Uh, I got made a graph here from one to 16, three days as an egg, and then on through. Um, probably too soon, but I've been doing that right along, and I'm doing pretty good with it. You gotta be really, really gentle. Um, but anyway, that's what I do. So now, so seven days after I graft, or eight days if it was pouring rain, I've made nukes up on rainy days. That's no fun. <laughs> I wore a suit that day. Um, so, I'll carry all the equipment out a day or two ahead of time because again, I'm really, really busy in the springtime and the day I'm making nukes, I got a motor. Um, I fill up the feeder jars the night before and I put all the feeder jars in my garage. I'll come back to that. The, the nuke boxes, inner covers, roofs, all that stuff gets all carried out a day or two ahead of time. I have it all stacked up in the bee yard. So then what I do, I, uh, first thing I do is go, and I haven't been in here since I put the graphs in, is I open this up and I, I pull out the graphs and see how I did. Uh, my first year, I think I got four. <laughs> Last year, I was 32. I was getting like 25, 28, something like that. So I have a quick peek, see how I did. If something went wrong and you don't have any, well, then you certainly, you certainly don't want to be... Uh, pulling resources out of other colonies and putting them into nuke boxes and then discover you have no cells. So check and see what you have for cells. Typically I would split this box. That It's going to have a good population of bees and lots of frames of honey. So I see I got a good number of cells. <clears throat> I'll go to my first support colony and I'll start pulling um, resources out of it. Now, in the ideal world, you got a frame of honey, a frame of pollen, and two frames of brood, all right? Last year, I'll tell you, I stretched my resources so thin, it was frightening, but it worked out. So in the ideal world, that's what you're trying to do. So I'll go to a support colony. What I'll do is I'll lay out half a dozen boxes in a semicircle around me, open that box up, start pulling frames out. Um, you know, I'll throw a frame of honey, and if I got four frames of honey, I'll put four frames, and like four boxes each get one frame, uh, watching for the queen. Start pulling out brood, give each box a frame of brood, 
knocking it down, watching for the queen. When I finally do find the queen, um, I'm going to leave her in a single, but it was probably a double box. I'm going to leave her in a single box with more honey than anything else, and definitely one frame of brood, and some foundation and whatnot. If I get all the way down to the end, I haven't found the queen, well, I haven't done anything with these nuke boxes. You know, I might have six or eight or however many I have. I can go back through them again, look for that queen. Um, so yeah, do that, get that settled. Now maybe these boxes aren't quite full. Well now I'll go and steal some frames of honey out of here and put, it, put them in. Try and get them so that, they're, uh, so that there's four frames in the nuke boxes. So now this is sitting up on a table. I come to this, I, I pull out my grafting frame. I try and sit it someplace um, where it's in the shade. Uh, and it's covered in bees. I don't sweep the bees, I don't shake the bees. Now camera's not gonna pick this up, I'm sure. But uh, when I push these little plastic queen cups in, I didn't push them all the way in. There's a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch there. So this is all covered in bees. Of course, I've got a decent pair of glasses on. I just come along with the hive tool very carefully. When you're, when you're trying to pick a frame up with, that's covered in bees, I don't wear gloves um, occasionally, but you, you can, you just, just don't grab it. You, you know, you put your, you, you pry this apart a little bit, and you put your fingers there, and you just slowly close. The bees get out of your way. They're not stupid. Well, same thing happens here. That queen cell is in a, you know, if I've got one in the mists and then maybe one, I, I try and work where there's space. Um, but basically you just kind of put your fingers around the cell and then put your hive tool in there and you push it out. And then the little knob that was in there, you transfer your fingers, you pick it up there. Um, you can Google these and maybe get a better image. But there's a plastic lip on there. I just open the cells, or the frames, put the plastic piece between the frames. Of course, those are drawn. There's bees, and you've got a nice queen cell there. Just don't squish the queen cell. Don't shake it. Um, and then put it in there. Oops, lost that one. <clears throat> and I would do, you know, you've got six or seven from that colony. I would do six or seven. Then I put it back in here. I may have removed some of the outer frames, but I'm still going to have two or three frames either side of that. And then I cover that back up. Uh, queen cells in here, don't be jiggling these frames too much now. You put them in, put my inner cover on, usually a couple of staples. Um, most of my nukes have doors, this one doesn't, there's a staple still there. I'd put a piece of tar paper there when I, when I carried them all out, and I'd close off the entrances ahead of time. So it's closed, these bees are sealed in. I carry this into my garage, put it in the garage, I put a feeder jar on it, and I leave them for 24 hours. Uh, I did a little experiment a few years back. I left them in the garage, for some of them for 24 hours, some for 48 hours, and then I brought them out and I watched to see if the bees went back to where they came from, and, the, and they don't. The last couple years now, I've just done it 24 hours. Um, and I, again, a little side note here. I stretched myself really thin last year. I made up nukes with just frames of honey, and some of them just three frames of honey and a frame of foundation. I had more queen cells than I wanted. I, I, like I said, I did three cell builders, and most of them took. Um, hindsight, I probably should have culled a few, but you, you know what, it, it worked. Um, left them confined for 24 hours, put them out in the bee yard, and uh, those ones ended up being extremely weak nukes, which worked out very well for me. The nukes that I made up with a couple frames of brood, and when I'm making them, if, if, if it's a real solid, really nice looking frame of brood, I probably just put one in. If it's kind of a half frame and a lot of honey and pollen and whatnot, well then maybe I put in two. But the ones that had lots of brood, obviously they ended up being much stronger nukes. Well, that's no big deal. They just get used sooner. Most of them got moved into 10 frame or sold or whatever. Um, the ones that were made up with just honey, they end up being really slow to build, really weak, but they, they do build. And actually I've got 21 of them out in the bee yard that I'm trying to winter. Um, yeah, so anyway, I don't worry about making them up with just honey anymore. Books tell you don't do that, but if you've got lots of cells, do that. Um, so I leave them in the garage for 24 hours. Oh, this one here too. I, so I just keep working. I get those ones put in the garage, come back out. I st obviously, I know how many more cells I have. I go to another cell builder. I make up another six or seven, whatever. And I just keep repeating that until I'm down to the end. This one's going to have all kinds of flight bees. Uh, you know, this was a, a full strength colony. So when I get down to the end, uh, I'll put one cell in here with a few frames of honey. Probably no brood. Um, well, it won't be any brood, uh, yeah. So this one's just going to have two, three frames of honey. and But it gets all the flight bees. This one actually builds pretty quick. Um, that one and all my nukes get a blue push pin. It tells me I have uh, cells in there. I leave these alone for at least two weeks. I'm in no hurry. Leave them alone for two weeks. Then I come back I have, and I've been feeding them. I keep these guys fed. 
the whole time. Keep them fed. Two weeks in, I come, I'll just have a very quick peek in there. If I see a virgin queen, or if I see a queen that looks mated, but she's not laying, I switch the blue pin to a white pin, tells me I've got a virgin queen. I also make all kinds of little sticky notes, and I'll put a sticky note inside here. And then there's a, there's a, a vent box that goes on here, and then the roof goes on, so those sticky notes don't get, uh, don't get damaged. So I mark down dates and stuff. Uh, if I go through that and I don't see a queen, I'll mark that down on the sticky note, but I'll stick a yellow push pin uh, on the top of the roof. That just tells me I got a little issue there. And I'll come back again in maybe two days and have another look. If I still don't find anything, I come back another couple days. I'll, I'll usually look three, four times. If I haven't found something in there, that means that virgin queen, either the cell was damaged or they didn't accept it or the virgin queen got lost on her mating flight, whatever. I don't want these to start laying, worker laying. So at that point, I kind of look at the numbers in there. Um, if, if there's just a handful of bees, I'll usually just shake them out someplace in front of another colony and then use those four frames for something else. But uh, depending on what the numbers are, if I've got one that's got a laying queen but the numbers aren't great, well, what I can do there is you've got four frames here. I'll take the inner cover off. I can take the, the box that's my vent box. It's also, it has a frame rest. I can put that on top of there. And then I can take those four frames out of the nuke that failed and put them in there, giving everybody a little bit of smoke. I've never had an issue doing it that way. Um, actually, I think I may have had one this year. If the, numbers, if the numbers are low in both of them, it doesn't usually cause too much problem. But if you want, you could put a piece of newspaper in there and then do that. But, uh, and then, of course, the inner cover goes on the top of that. And then another vent and a roof. So, yeah, if I don't find a queen, I just simply unite them. Um, these ones that are weaker, as the summer progresses, I'll just put another box on and give them four frames. And, and by the end of the summer, they'll have that filled. Uh, <clears throat> the ones that are stronger, I give them four frames. And usually halfway through the summer, they've got them filled. Well, now I get eight frames. That's real easy to move over to, uh, to move over to some 10 frame equipment. All right, so the nuke that has the Virgin Queen or a white pen, uh, make sure she has room to lay. I, I, I'll leave her alone. Uh, I'll probably leave that week, 10 days perhaps, come back, check again. Um, if, if I see that she's laying, I'll then switch the white pin to a green pin. I won't catch her in marker at that time. I sometimes find new queens or little skittish, virgin queens especially. You don't want to be trying to catch them. They end up in the grass on you and that's no fun. Um, as long as she's in four of the four frames, as long as she's got room to lay, I'll just mark it with a green pen so I know there's a laying queen. I don't need to come. I'll put the date on my little note. I don't need to go back in there. When I'm ready to give her a second box or I'm going to move her to something else, uh, at that time I'll probably catch her and mark her. If I'm, if I'm adding a second box in four frames, I'll catch her and mark her. Then I put two green pins on um, and then just leave her there till I, I have a use or a need for her. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. Did I forget anything? I'll go in the house and watch this. And maybe I'll come back and redo it again. <laughs> um, I think that's going to be it. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, thanks for watching. As always, you be good to your bees, and I'm sure it'll be good to you. We'll see you next time.